Welcome to the library. Let's go see a show. It's locked here. On September 6th, 1620, 102 pilgrims set sail aboard the Mayflower, a small cargo ship. They were escaping religious persecution in England. On November 9th, land was sighted, and on December 11th, they made landfall at Plymouth Rock where they met Squanto, an Indian, who taught them how to fish, plant corn, pumpkins, and other crops. The harvest of 1621 was more than they could have dreamed of. The pilgrims and Indians partied and feasted for three days. It was called a harvest feast or green corn dance. It was the first Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November. Thanksgiving reminds people of the pilgrims many years ago. The pilgrims wanted to worship God in their own way, which they had not been allowed to do. They left their homes in England and went to Holland and soon sailed across the ocean to the New World in a ship called the Mayflower. The voyage was difficult and stormy. The Mayflower was crowded. Many of the pilgrims got sick. Finally, after many weeks, they sighted land. They began building homes. Then the cold winter came. Pilgrims had little food to eat and some died. Spring finally came. Indians showed the pilgrims how to plant corn, beans, and pumpkins. Other crops. Pilgrims learned how to hunt. The crops grew. And when fall came, their harvest was great. The pilgrims wanted to thank God for the food they would have through the cold winter months. They decided to have a Thanksgiving feast. The pilgrims invited their Indian friends. They had wonderful food to eat. There was a turkey with nuts, herbs, bread, and cranberries. They made sauce from the cranberries, too. They roasted deer meat. There was cornbread, beans, and pumpkin pie. The pilgrims and Indians played many games and shared happy times together. The feast lasted three days. There was much to be thankful for. Our Thanksgiving Day is celebrated much like the pilgrims. Some homes are decorated with pumpkins and gourds and such things as that. Pictures of the pilgrims and turkeys appear in windows and doors. Sometimes candles are lit inside of pumpkins. They're called jack-o'-lanterns. Horns of plenty representing a bountiful harvest may also be added. Sometimes hymns of thanksgiving are sung along with prayers. Friends and family gather for a feast. Many tables are filled with the same foods pilgrims and Indians shared. There is cranberry sauce and a big turkey stuffed with breadcrumbs, herbs, and nuts. Also, there are sweet potatoes, bean squash, and cornbread. Sometimes, actually most times, there's a tasty pumpkin pie for dessert. Games are played like football. There is a great parade every Thanksgiving, which people ride on floats. And of course, there's marching bands. On Thanksgiving Day, there is much to be thankful for. It's called Thank You, Sarah. You think you know everything about Thanksgiving, don't you? How some Native Americans saved the pilgrims from starving? And how the pilgrims held a big feast to celebrate and say thank you. What did they have? 
turkey, pumpkin pie, cranberries, the works. Well, listen up, I have a news flash. We almost lost Thanksgiving. How many way, way back when skirts were long and hats were tall, Thanksgiving was fading away. Sure, the folks up in New England celebrated it. They'd roast a turkey and invite the relatives when the harvest came in, but not in the South and not in the West and not even in the Middle Atlantic states. More and more people ignored the holiday. Thanksgiving was in trouble. It needed a superhero. Someone bold and brave and stubborn and smart. Thanksgiving needed Sarah Hale. Now I know that you're thinking, she doesn't look like a superhero. She looks like a dainty little lady. Never underestimate dainty little ladies. Sarah Hale was every inch a superhero. Not only did she fight for Thanksgiving, she fought for playgrounds for kids, schools for girls, and historical monuments for everyone. She argued against spanking and pie for breakfast, dull stories, corsets and bloomers and bustles, and very serious things like slavery. And if that weren't enough, she raised five children, wrote poetry, children's books, novels, and biographies, was the first female magazine editor in America, published great American authors like Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and Edgar Allan Poe, and composed Mary Had a Little Lamb. She was bold, brave, and stubborn, and smart. And Sarah Hale had a secret weapon. She picked up her pen and wrote about it. She wrote letters, she wrote articles, she wrote and wrote and wrote until she persuaded people to make the world a better place and nothing stopped Sarah. Sarah Hale loved Thanksgiving. She wanted the whole country to celebrate it the same way she did and on the same day. And when the folks started to ignore Thanksgiving, she picked up her pen and she wrote letters, thousands of letters to politicians to make Thanksgiving a national holiday. She wrote magazine articles asking her readers for help. The women in America listened. They put down their babies, their hoes, their skillets, and their washings, and they picked up their pens and wrote. And when the letters arrived, the politicians listened too. One by one, the states officially made Thanksgiving a holiday, but that wasn't good enough. Sarah Hale wanted the whole country to celebrate together like a family, and so she went to the top. The president himself, Zachary Taylor, and he refused. That didn't stop Sarah. She waited for the next election and wrote the new president, Mil Millard Fillmore, and he said no too. She was bold, brave, and stubborn and smart, and Sarah wrote to the next president, Franklin Pierce, wouldn't a national holiday, a national day of Thanksgiving be wonderful? And he said no too. So Sarah penned an elegant letter to President James Buchanan. She gave all of the reasons why America would be better off if everyone gathered on the fourth Thursday in November to give thanks. And President Buchanan disagreed. He had other things on his mind. Sarah felt like the stuffing had been kicked out of her. Everything was going wrong. America was at war, the North against the South. The states had promised to celebrate Thanksgiving, change their mind. Nothing stops Sarah. Superheroes work in the hardest when things get tough. She picked up her mighty pen and wrote another letter, and this time it was to President Abraham Lincoln. America needed Thanksgiving now more than ever. A holiday wouldn't stop the war, but it could help bring the country together. She signed the letter, folded it, and slid it into an envelope. She wrote Mr. Lincoln's name and address on the envelope and stuck the stamp and mailed the letter. Lincoln said yes. In 1863, President Lincoln made Thanksgiving a national holiday, a day for all Americans to give thanks together. It took Sarah Hale 38 years, thousands of letters, and countless bottles of ink, but she did it. Nothing stopped Sarah, that bold, brave, stubborn, and smart lady, save Thanksgiving for all of us. Thank you, Sarah. The end. What we're going to be making, it's a little scarecrow decoration with a pumpkin patch.
two Pilgrim brothers sang as they walked down the path together. We're two mighty pilgrims coming your way, looking for a turkey for Thanksgiving Day. We'll plug them in, stove them in, cook them up right. We'll go, we'll go, we'll go, we'll turkey for dinner tonight. The little pilgrim thought about plucking and stuffing. He thought about cooking. He wasn't so sure about plucking and stuffing and cooking. He wasn't so sure about having a turkey for Thanksgiving dinner at all. The first turkey we see will be Thanksgiving dinner, declared the big pilgrim. The little pilgrim looked through his spyglass and said, what if we don't see any turkeys? Don't worry, said the big program. We will. Around the next bend, a turkey was in a tizzy. The Pilgrim brothers are coming. Are coming, he cried. They see me, they'll pluck out all my feathers and stuff me with red crumbs. And cook me for dinner, Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, no, what can I do? We're going to hide. Turkey, a bird called. Fly up here in this tree. The leaves will hide you. So, the turkey took a running start. He flapped his wings and flew up into the tree. Who says turkeys can't fly? But then, a breeze climbed into the air. It blew the dry leaves right off the tree. Oh, no, cried the turkey. Here come the Pilgrim Brothers. The little pilgrim looked through his spyglass. He saw a tree with leaves on the ground. He saw something in the tree. I'm tired of turkey for Thanksgiving dinner, the little pilgrim said. Are you sure we want a turkey? Well, the big pilgrim said, Father wants a turkey. Come on, the little pilgrim said, let's go this way. And off they went in another direction, singing. The two mighty pilgrims coming your way, looking for a turkey for Thanksgiving Day. We pluck them in and stuff them and cook them up right. We'll gobble, gobble, gobble turkey for dinner tonight. The turkey ran the other way. He saw a gopher sitting in the grass. The pilgrim brothers are going, oh no. If they see me, they will pluck out all my feathers and stuff with a bread cut and cook me for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh no, where can I hide? Oh, gopher, hide me, please. Oh no. You can hide in a hole in the ground like me, the gopher said. He jumped into his gopher hole. <laughs>